here I am in Word and as I said I'm going to create a mail merge this one I'm going to do a letter so I'm going to just get started with that and what I need to do I've just got a blank document here at the moment but it could actually be one that I've already prepared so I could actually do that by going into file choosing open and I've got one called welcome down here and what I'm going to do is just open it and you'll see it's got the basis for my letter here and you'll see it's got a blank where I want the first name to go and I also want someone's address to go at the top there. So what I need to do is start off my mail merge and the mail merge wizard will then help me through this. So what I'm going to do is go into tools, choose letters and mailing and then mail merge. And when I do that, I'm just going to move this across here, you'll see on the right hand side of the screen comes up my mail merge task pane. And you'll see the first thing I need to do is to choose whether I want to do letters, email, envelopes, labels or a directory. So envelopes and labels are something else again, but we're just going to take a look at letters. I will do one on email messages and also envelopes and labels. So for this one I'm choosing letters and down at the bottom here you'll see it's gone step one of six. I just need to click on next starting document. And when I do, I get the chance, it says here, select starting document and it says use the current document, which I'm gonna do. Start from a template, so you could open up a template you've got, or you could start from an existing document, so you could open one, but I already did that. So I'm gonna use my current document here. Each of these two would give us the appropriate options to then open one. This could have been a blank document, this current document here, but as it happens, as I said, I already opened one. You'll see down here on the wizard, it's step two of six, and I could actually just move to selecting recipients, which is what I want to do, or I could go back and choose the document type if I've realized it's gonna be a different one to the one I've chosen. So if I decided to now do an email instead of a letter. So I'm gonna choose next, and here you'll see that I've got the option to select the recipients. So it's using an existing list. I could select it from Outlook contacts if I'm using Outlook, or I can type in a new list. Now you should normally take these from something that already exists, so it's gonna normally be one of these two. Because if you're doing a mail merge, you may type the list now, but normally it's something that you're gonna do on a regular basis, so you're gonna use again. So what I want to do, I'm actually going to choose either Word, Excel or Access. They're all, in a, they're all very similar. So I'm just going to run you through actually choosing those. I've got the same database effectively in all three. So I'm just going to click on Browse. And you'll see my dialog box comes up here to select a data source. And I'm just going to click on My Documents where I've got them stored. And you can see here I've got one for Contacts in Word, which is .doc, in Excel for XLS. And I've also got one here. MDB. I'm just going to take a quick look at the contacts one here which was a table in Word and I showed you that in the getting started tutorial. And I click on open and this dialog box pops up which is the mail merge recipients dialog box and you can see it's got all the people down here. I've got about 10 people here. I can choose not to include some people at this stage and this will apply again as well for Excel and Access. Or I could actually choose, if I scroll across, you'll see I could actually narrow things down. So I actually have a field here. I want to send this to people who are going to get letters. So I'm going to click on this drop down here and choose letter. I can apply other filters as well. So here it says, this actually says send here. It's just chopped that bit off. I could say I'm only going to do it to people who have selected yes as to people I'm going to send to. I'm going to choose yes and you'll see now it's narrowed it right down. Both of these are in blue, these arrows, so I can actually choose that and go back and choose all. And you'll see there are other options here like blanks and non-blanks too. I could, if I wanted to, also filter by county. Okay, so you do have some options there. I'm going to click on OK because I'm going to send it to people who are designated as having a letter and had yes in the send box there. So I'm going to click on OK. Now you don't see anything happening just yet. I could choose, here it says select a different list, or I could edit the recipient list. If I go to the edit recipient list, 
it takes me back to this dialog box where I can do my filtering and choose from this list who I want to send it to. I could select a different list and just to show you what would happen if I chose say Excel, I'm going into my documents again, I'm going to contacts and you'll see that this time the difference is because you can have different sheets in Excel it wants to know which sheet and it's going for this one here which is there's only one it's called contact so if I was to click on OK you'll see that it looks very familiar exactly the same way that it came out for Word and that I can now filter that and I can now choose true for that annoyingly each time I've chosen something on that filter it's jumped back to the left hand side I find that quite annoying but nevertheless the filters do work and that's very handy so I'm going to click on OK so what if it was going to be access well I could choose select a different list again and I click on my documents and here it is my mail shot and you'll see it's picking up the query that I've got or my contacts table I'm going to choose my contacts table click on OK and guess what it comes up with this list again and again the filtering does exactly the same thing now with the access one it may come up asking you what is your data source once you've chosen that what you need to choose is the MS short for Microsoft access database and it will say ODBC that's the one you want you choose that and then it will come back to do all these other things that we've chosen should that happen click on OK I've now gone through and shown you that you can choose Word, Excel or Access and that you can edit that list. I'm now going to write my letter. So I'm just going to choose this option here. We're on step three of six. I'm now going to step four and you'll see it's coming up with these options here. Address block, greeting line, electronic postage and more items. So let's just see what happens. I'm just going to take a quick look at this letter here and you'll see that it says here dear and it's blank there but what I want to do is put in the address at the top and this is where I can now edit it or start typing so what I can do is I can come across to here I can choose address block and I will now get this address block that shows me different ways that I can actually display the information you'll see here I can choose to insert the recipient's name in this format here so I can choose how I want it to look. I can get it to insert the company name and also the postal address and then it gives me options for never include the country region in this address so it will not show you like the country always include the country and this one here only include the country if it's different from the country that you choose and in this case it's the United Kingdom. You then get you then get options as to how to display the address. You can actually untick it so that there's no address in there at all but we are going to have it in there and what I can do is I can change it here so I can choose match fields and I can say that the last name matches the last name here the first name matches the first name the courtesy title the company there isn't one so basically this is what word is perceiving as it's going to put in and then this is how you've got it typed out on your database so if you would used surname here you might need to choose from this list the correct field that should go in there and I'm just looking down this list there's nothing there that actually needs changing it normally does a pretty good job so I'm just going to leave all of those as they are but if you did use a different column heading and it really doesn't matter you could choose it from here and actually just choose the correct one so just fictitiously if courtesy title was actually the ID I would choose that and it would display the ID field I'm just going to change that back and click on OK. So that's your insert address block and when I click on OK you'll see it puts in this field here these things with the chevrons on the side is what's known as a field and, and that will put in the whole address block. Now what I want it to do is over here I want it to say dear and I'm going to get it to put in their first name. Now I could choose this greeting line option which will do this for me but I've already typed in dear and I could get it to do the rest and it's similar to the address block where I've got the match fields and it uses exactly the same information. So I'm just going to hit cancel on that and cancel again. What I could do is actually choose more items and in here it gives me all of my fields in my database and I could choose first name 
and then click insert and close and what you'll see is it has put in the first name. Now what you could do with a mail merge is you could actually have this where someone might be attending on a particular date say for an interview that information might already be in your database so where you've got your more items and you had a date of interview in here you can insert that into the correct place in your letter. So I'm just going to hit cancel on that. I'm going to put a comma in at the end there. That would be correct. So that is my letter as it stands. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move across here. And what I can do now is click on next to preview my letter. You'll see that it's got this recipient one and I can actually move backwards and forwards through it. And again, I can edit the recipient list as I did before so I can add in more filtering. I'm not going to do any of that, but when I move across here, you'll see that it's got that first person on that list. And where I had those buttons where it said recipient one, I'm now just going to click on those. And before where I had it where it said recipient one and I had those buttons, I'm just going to click on those and you'll see that it actually moves me through my database. So I can actually see each of these individual letters. I can still edit my letter if I want to add something in. So I could add in here. So I'm just going to put in my website itself and you'll see it's actually appearing on all of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to complete the merge. I can, as I said, at any time move back. So I've got previous here. I can go back to writing my letter. I'm going to click on next, complete the merge. I'm going to click on it and I can choose print or I can choose edit individual letters. Now if I hit print, it'll just go straight to the print of the usual print settings. If I choose edit individual letters, what I'm going to do is click on OK and what it'll do is it'll create every single one of these as a separate letter and they'll all be on a different page as well. So if I wanted to add in, this one here is to Marvin, if I scroll down and if I add something into this one, you'll see that it's in this one here, but if I scroll up, it's not in this one. So now I can actually personalize each individual one. So I had the option there to edit each individual letter or I can actually have sent it straight to the printer and it would have just printed all of them straight off. Now the other thing I can do, what you'll see is it's actually got one here. It says it's letters one. That is a brand new document. So basically it took my mail merge and it created a brand new document. The document that is my mail merge still exists. I've just flicked back to welcome letter. This is the one with the mail merge and if I move across you'll see the mail merge task pane is here. So what this allows me to do is I can now save this mail merge with everything that I've set up. If I need to run this again I just open this. It connects to the database and it puts everything in the right place. I can then just make amendments to the letter. So if every year I've got to send out the same letter but I just need to make a small change to it, why not save it? If your database is updated, this will update with it too. That's a quick look at creating letters using Mail Merge in Word.